Hey Summoners, what's up? Another patch, another episode of OP Pick or Ban here for you guys. In this video, we're covering the picks you need to pick or ban on patch 10.3. In spite of a plethora of changes this patch, we aren't seeing as many changes in the meta as we expected. There are still changes though, so stay tuned because we're going to cover champions across every single role. For our question of the day, what changes from this patch are you happiest about? I'm really glad they nerfed Set and Sona. I think that they're good champions for the game with plenty of counterplay and the only issues with them were their numbers. Are you getting ganked in your own lane, constantly demolished? Don't worry, we got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly help you level up your League of Legends skills. Whether you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Night Blue, Bunny Fufu, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to start improving right now. All right, let's get into it. First up, let's kick things off with the top lane. He hasn't been gone long, but we're here to welcome back Darius to another episode of OP Picker Ban. Especially with some nerfs that hit set this patch, Darius is ready to once again dominate the top lane. Darius's kill pressure in lane, snowbally nature, and ability to stomp disorganized teams makes him one of the most potent solo Q carries in the game. Darius's insane synergy with Conqueror, bonus damage from his passive, and high attack damage ratios make him very powerful. His power only increases as you delve into lower brackets, but do note that even at a platinum and higher level, Darius fell just short of a 51% win rate. That means that even against both advanced and elite players, Darius is still a champion who's finding success. This statistic should be higher, and it should also be much easier to pop off with Darius in lower elo games where players haven't developed their mechanics and decision making as much. While he did receive a notable nerf this patch, Set is still remaining on this list. He fell just short a 56% win rate on patch 10.2, which is absolutely insane considering that he was also the most played top laner. Although Set is essentially a stat check champion who will be heavily affected by any nerfs to his abilities, the nerfs he received this patch primarily target his late game, not his early game. He's still going to be a powerful laner who can create leads for himself. This should take away some power in the late game, but it'd be a huge surprise if his win rate dropped more than 3 or 4% because of it. Set will remain a powerful pick, but one more nerf after this one could spell trouble for the boss. At the moment, Set is sitting in a state where most players can't find solutions to him. Throughout basically all of his matchups, even ones where he should theoretically lose, Set held at least a 51% win rate. This means that he was simply too strong in other aspects that losing lane alone wouldn't hinder him. He should be in a healthier place this patch, however. If you're playing a melee champion, it's still a good idea to throw your ban at set because he's still a powerhouse during the laning phase. 2v2 skirmishes are what you need to avoid when playing against him, or look for when playing as him. When playing set, play aggressively and use your early game power to begin snowballing leads. That's going to conclude the top lane, so make sure to take a look at those builds on the screen one more time. Alright, let's kick off the jungle, so listen up. We're going to talk about Lee Sin first. Conqueror is the keystone we've been and are going to keep talking about for a while. It's so powerful right now, and Lee Sin's AD ratios are too high to ignore with this keystone. It provides so much raw attack damage and has pushed Lee Sin to a power level he hasn't been at for quite a while now. Whenever a skilled Lee player manages to get their hands on him during champion select, you know that they're going to pop off. Especially with the nerfs to Echo, Lee Sin is looking like he's going to absolutely dominate the jungle now. While he might not be the fastest farmer, he's one of the best champions at clearing Krugs quickly because of his E, which covers the area surrounding him. He can save a lot of time by stacking up the small Krugs and killing them simultaneously with his E. Overall, this minor change should help him out when he's already been doing great. Yes, he doesn't have a positive win rate, but a champion like him usually won't because he's so popular. Both casual and more serious players are going to play him because they enjoy him, so Lee Sin is a champion whose win rate will always be a bit lower than the best players would believe it to be. Another pick that's killing it in the jungle is Kha'Zix. His ability to assassinate foes and take advantage of the disorganized play we see in solo queue merits him one of the highest win rates for the amount of play he gets. Since he also tends to farm a bit more, the EXP buffs this patch should also help him out a bit. Kha'Zix's damage comes out extremely quickly. He quite literally will take you out within a second, giving players little to no time to do anything in response. While this won't be very strong against tanks, very few tanks are a part of the meta at the moment, and you can instead avoid picking Kha'Zix when you're playing against some beefier opponents. Kha'Zix's 51% win rate last patch was due to a combination of his many strengths, and I think a lot of people also take his dueling power for granted. You can run Conqueror instead of Electrocute if you'd prefer to go for longer battles, as Kha'Zix can also take advantage of the bonus attack damage with his extremely short cooldown on Q. 
In most cases, however, the burst damage Electrocute provides should be more than enough to win many skirmishes, and also aid him in his quest to delete someone from the game. Check out those jungle builds one more time as we move on to the mid lane next. Diana is still a monster in the mid lane. Holding just short of a 54% win rate last patch, it's no surprise that she had to get nerfed a bit in this one. However, these nerfs aren't substantial enough to take her out of the picture altogether. We still believe that she's going to be a prominent pick in the mid lane because of her insane damage, incredible scaling, and the fact that she's a little bit beefier than most assassins. The fact that she gets to build a Rod of Ages as well as Azania's means that it's not as simple as killing her before she kills you. Since she can also dash on her lane opponents before level 6 now, she's also able to contest lane priority in many more matchups. Long gone are the days of junglers having to give up scuttle crabs. Diana is now in a place where she can help and look for some early fights whenever necessary. Once again, she's also another champion that takes advantage of Conqueror for its immense adaptive force bonus. Since it also provides healing, this makes her even tankier, as her other items will already allow her to survive a bit longer in fights as well. Next up in the mid lane is Fizz. Similar to Diana, he also one-shots his opponents. Whether or not he can land his ultimate, Fizz is still a pretty potent threat. However, it's often best to hold onto that shark until you're certain you can land it. If you do, there's practically no escaping from him. Fizz's biggest strength lies in how slippery he is in spite of being a powerful assassin. The combination of his E and Zanya's means that he can buy time, avoid a bunch of abilities, and worst of all, survive for a second rotation of spells. He's able to zone his enemies off effectively by simply having the threat of his ultimate. On top of this, Fizz has a pretty powerful laning phase against many opponents because of his high burst damage. It usually only takes one good trade to set up a solo kill on the next fight he goes for. Once ahead, Fizz can really take over games because of how cheap his core items are. Any gold lead he finds means that he finishes these items even faster. He'll already finish them before his opponents in most cases, so this attributes to how hard he can snowball his leads. That's it for the mid lane, so check out those builds again as we transition into the bottom lane. If you ever have the misfortune to play against misfortune in the bottom lane, I am sorry for you. To most of you marksman players, I'm going to heavily suggest that you pick or ban her. Misfortune's laning phase is too oppressive, I honestly feel like there's zero counterplay to her sometimes. She can beat practically every bot laner in the game right now, so you're pretty safe to blind pick her. Lane priority is paramount in this meta that heavily prioritizes dragons, especially if they're infernal or ocean ones. While Misfortune used to be considered a champion that fell off hard, she's still a great team fighter because of her ultimate. You don't always have to go for a wombo combo pentakill with it. Using it to chunk out multiple opponents is usually enough to force them to retreat. From here, Misfortune and her teammates are usually free to start up a siege or neutral objective since their enemies are pretty low. The next bot laner on our list is Vayne. Her aggressive playstyle and snowbally nature have always made her one of the go-to 1v9 solo queue stompers. At the moment, she's also in a pretty good place, ending with a 51% win rate last patch. That's pretty high for the kind of champion she is as well. We talked about Lee Sin earlier and how champions like him are doomed to a lower win rate because of their popularity. Vayne is a similar kind of champion, but much less popular these days. Nevertheless, she's managed to secure a solid win rate, showing that she's quite powerful at the moment. She's also one of the few champions who rushes a Blade of the Ruined King, giving her an immense kill pressure advantage in the laning phase when she finishes it or its component, Bilgewater Cutlass. The slows they provide allow her to outrun her opponents, chasing them down anytime she's stronger than them. Also, in this current meta, Vayne is one of the safest late game picks because of her insane mobility. Kind of ironic, honestly, but it makes sense and it's cool to see her doing well again. That's it for the bot lane, so we're going to show you those builds one more time as we wrap it up with supports. Making a return from last episode is Leona, for the same reasons too. To reiterate what we mentioned last time, Leona is a great champion who provides a lot for her team. She's tanky, provides crowd control, and works great as both a diver and peeler because of it. Leona's kill pressure in lane also allows her to force many of her opponents to concede lane priority. Hooray for more dragon control! Leona beats out almost every other melee support and can burst down basically every squishy one as long as she has the chance to play aggressively. For you playmaking supports out there, Leona is going to be your pick of the patch. If you're more of a defensive player, consider banning her since a good Leona player is going to punish you as hard as they can early in the game. Let's face it, Riot overbuffed Sona last patch, and they even admitted it. They're toning her down a bit this patch, but I still believe that she's going to be one of the best supports in the game. Sona is one of the best late game supports, and she also provides every form of utility you'd want from a support. After all, she's a support based around auras, and she's got them all. Sona can increase her team's damage output, protect them, speed them up, 
and also has hard crowd control as a result of her ultimate. Anytime Sona is strong, she's oppressive because that's the kind of champion she is. She's currently at that level, so make sure to abuse her because Sona's combination of poke and sustain can make her a great aggressive pick. Just don't go too ham and get one shot with her. You can always scale up for the late game, which is also why we suggest taking Gathering Storm on her. Alright, that's it for support, so let's take a look at those builds one last time, guys. And that concludes this episode of OP Picker Ban. If you have any feedback for us, make sure to leave it in the comments down below. We're always doing our best to improve our content for you guys. Also, make sure to check out ProGuides.com as well as our YouTube channel to find more content to help you improve and climb. Until next time, good luck on Summoner's Rift.